I'm Darren with muzzleloaders.com and I'm filming at Burris HQ today and uh, we're going to be learning how to sight in and program the Burris Eliminator 4 for a muzzleloader. Uh, so the first thing that we're going to want to do is we're going to go chat with Sky and get all of our data plugged into the Burris calculator. I'm Sky Layton with Burris Optics. Today we're going to go over how to program your Eliminator. We're doing the muzzleloader today. The Eliminator's 2, 3, 4, and now 5 will all be programmed the same way. First thing we're going to do, we go to Burris Ballistic Services at BurrisOptics.com. Let's get the Ballistic Services. We're going to go into the Eliminator. Here you get to select your Eliminator. We are selecting the Eliminator 4, which is what we're running today. Options are 100, 250 yard zero. If you're shooting a muzzle loader, or slugs, maybe rim fires, some of the older uh, generation or slower muzzle loaders, you probably want a 50 yard zero. But here, we're gonna go up with this hot rod, we're gonna go up to a 100 yard zero. We're shooting in yards, move over to step two. Here on step two, we're gonna select our uh, bullet, what we're shooting. Since these, uh, since the technology is moving so fast on these muzzle loaders, this one isn't updated, we're gonna jump into manual input. Here, we are shooting power belt. This is a descriptive field that will show up on our chart. We're gonna move into velocity. We've already chronoed this. We're at 2720, going over to uh, BC. So we got a 0.36 BC confirmed. And when you're running the eliminator, since we've already got a confirmed BC, and at the end of this, we're gonna show you the table that we're gonna to wanna to take to the, to the field. We're gonna do a true BC because this is a confirmed BC. Last piece of input is we are shooting the 225 power bolt. We're gonna move up to step three. Step three, we have two options. If you're more advanced, you have a Kestrel um, or one of the uh, density altitude measuring devices. Density altitude's always gonna be more accurate, but for this process, also, uh, um, entering your conditions manually will be fine. We do know that we are, we are at 5,000 feet for our range here in Greeley, Colorado. Denver is going to let that run. We do know that today is a pretty dramatic temperature difference. So at the best, we're going to be up to 40 degrees. So again, starting this off of the best information possible. And we're going to remove on to uh, step four. So this is our programming number. What we have here is... The scope is set in yards. We've got our temperature across the uh, top with the description, 225 grain power belt, 2720 with uh, 0.36 G1BC. And our programming number, as you go through, as you push and hold the two buttons, it comes into the mode. You're gonna do yards and meters, 50, 100, or 200 yard zero is what that 1,000 line is. And then we have 185 inches of drop at 750 yards with a BC of 0.36. If we get out to the range today, and when we're shooting at 750 yards, if we find ourselves hitting five inches low or five inches high, we will increase this number up or down so that it is hitting exactly at 750 yards. The uh, one thing you can't emphasize enough that if you tell this scope that you're sighting in at 100 yards, you need to be dead on at 100 yards, not one inch high, two inches high. Um, it's taking that as a uh, part of the calculation. So you need to be hitting exactly at 100 yards in order for the rest of the process to take off the place. You throw that off an inch, it throws everything off um, down, down range. So the 185 is the number of inches that we'll be dropping at 750 yards. It is very important that you go to your longest range possible um, up to 750 yards. 750 is where it is in whole inches. So it's the easiest math. So again, if you're hitting, if the main crosshair was held at um, the 750 yard target, how far down would that bullet drop? You can shoot, if you don't know that number or don't have a calculator to measure it, you can sight in dead on at 100 yards, move off to 750 yards, take that drop where that bullet would hit below the target, below the point of aim, that's the number of inches that you're gonna plug into because you're lifting that up. Once you range the 750 yard target, you're gonna get a drop that is 185 inches at distance and you will use that dot to confirm this drop number. So we're gonna go into the menu, set this, that will program the eliminator to what to the information that we just put in. We've got this generate table option. It's definitely a nice piece to take home. We are shooting today at 5,000 feet. So you see our drop is 185 inches with a BC of 0.36. 
If we were to make a very large change in elevation, it actually does start to affect the uh, bullet drop and the BC. So if we're going to be hunting, if we're going to end up hunting our elk at 8,000 feet, we'd want to go in here and change the change it to a drop number of 171 and a .46. Again, we've got the true data on this one, so we know that this one is the one we're going to take to the field. The zero at 100 yards won't change. The mechanical zero will stay the same. But to come in here for the programming, as, you're, as the uh, air gets lighter and cooler, the bullet's going to fly flatter and faster for longer. So the BC goes up, the drop goes down, and uh, this will... Uh, take you wherever you go around the world by, uh, by using this chart. You can accommodate any of the shooting situations you may encounter. All right, now that we have all the data from Sky, we're gonna head out to the range, we're gonna get everything sighted in and programmed, and then we're gonna shoot this baby at 750 yards. All right, so the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna hold the power and the forward button to access the menu. As soon as you do that, that is gonna pull up all of your values. And uh, the first one you're gonna see on the left is yards or meters, and we are gonna use yards today. And then you have uh, the next value is your uh, drop at 100. And our value is 183. And in order to change that, uh, you click forward to move over to it. So click the forward button to move over to that value. Once you see it flashing, you click the up or down button to change that value until you reach the, the, the value that you're supposed to have there. And then you click the forward button again, and that's gonna put us on ballistic coefficient we're using the uh, Powerbelt ELR 40 cal. That is a 0.36 ballistic coefficient. Uh, but the same thing there, if you need to change that, you click the up or down button. And then once you're done there, you click the back button and that is gonna save everything and you're ready to shoot. All right, so now that we have the eliminator programmed and ready to go with our ballistics, we're gonna go ahead and zero it at 100 yards. And we're not gonna get super into the weeds on that because pretty much everybody has experience zeroing it. And it works just like any other scope as far as that goes. Uh, but the one thing I really want to emphasize is that it is a true zero at 100 yards. A lot of people with their center fires or whatever will, will zero an uh, inch and a half or two inches high at 100 so that they can reach their distance out further. But that is not what you want to do with the eliminator. You want to make sure that it is a true zero at 100 yards. All right, so we have the burst eliminator zeroed at 100 yards. We're going to stretch it out to 750 now. Um, and I ranged the target and uh, we're exactly 750. It gave me my vertical holdover. Uh, we're guessing that it is about a 15-ish mile an hour wind, so I, I'm going to hold three and a half mils and see where we hit on the first shot. All right, so we just got an impact at 750 yards in a 20 mile an hour crosswind with the muzzleloader using the Burris Eliminator 4. Uh, I personally could not be more impressed with this scope. Uh, I think it did a phenomenal job. Um, and so I have a ton of faith in this scope. If you guys have any questions regarding long range muzzle loading, drop them in the comments below. Uh, we'll be happy to get back to you there and we'll see you in the next video.